is cottage cheese a staple on the keto diet? I mean, we look at it, we see high fat, we see low carbohydrate, we see moderate amounts of protein. So it seems when we first look at it, yes, like hands down, this is a great keto food. Okay, but then we have, on the other hand, all the stuff that's saying, hey, you should avoid dairy, you should limit your dairy, and this and that, and that and this. So we don't really know where we stand. Well, I'm gonna clear it up for you. I'm gonna give you a crystal clear breakdown of if cottage cheese is good or if it's bad, and if it is good, what kind of cottage cheese should you look for? If it is bad, what should you be looking for? It's not always apples to apples. We have to look at different things. I will say in short, cottage cheese is solid. If you're on a keto diet, if you get the right stuff, it works really well. So we're gonna break it all down, including how it's made, so you have a full comprehension. Hey, we have new videos just about every single day right now, coming out at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time, so just always keep it locked in on my channel. Hit that red subscribe button, and then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications and never miss a beat. Okay, so first thing we're gonna start with is how cottage cheese is made. Okay, it sounds boring, but it will add up. All right, so basically what happens is you take milk and you warm it up. And then once milk is warmed up, you add some kind of acidic component to it. Okay, maybe it's lime juice, maybe it's vinegar, or hopefully it's good, healthy cultures. Okay, what this does is it starts to separate the whey. Okay, it starts to make it curdle a little bit. So what happens is the whey separates and you're left with some of the casein proteins. Casein proteins are not bad, contrary to what people will say. It all depends on the kind of casein proteins. Okay, so once that's separated, then they take the casein proteins, those milk solids that are separating, and they cut them up a little bit. And when you cut those milk solids up, more moisture leaves. And when more moisture leaves, more milk sugars leave, and more whey protein leaves. So you're left with a pretty solid chunk of good old fashioned casein protein, which again, is a good solid complete protein. Then they cook that a little bit more to cook even more moisture out of it. So a good quality cottage cheese is actually going to be pretty low moisture. And then a lot of times what can be done is good quality creams can be added in after the mix. This is gonna make it so that you end up with a higher quality fat content, but you're not left with a bunch of moisture coming purely from milk, sugar, and whey. Now, I'll talk more about whey in a minute because whey is not bad, but whey also spikes your insulin. So we'll talk about it here in a second. Now, when it comes to caseins, there's a lot of evidence out there that says some casein proteins are bad. And that's the operative word there being some. They're not all the same. See, if we go back in history, we have different kinds of dairy. We have different kinds of cows, really. You may have heard of A1 and A2 caseins before. Basically, what this refers to is the fact that A1 caseins are the more modern proteins coming from more modern cows that are quite honestly, a little bit more genetically altered and they're going to have a little bit more in the way of a grain-fed diet, things that just aren't really good. And then when you look at A2 proteins, those are A2 proteins that are coming from higher quality grass-fed, grass-finished cows, and they're coming from ones that haven't been hormonally altered a whole lot. So where it actually makes a difference is in the amino acid chain that makes up a protein. Now I know this is a little complex, so I'm gonna make it very simple. We still have 209 amino acids that are making up the ultimate chain in casein protein. Okay, it doesn't matter what kind of casein it is, good, bad, ugly, still 209 amino acids. What differentiates good casein from not so good casein is the 67th amino acid. Okay, that 67th amino acid dictates everything. All it takes is one amino acid to be different to change the whole protein structure. So my whole point in saying all this isn't to like slave over trying to find a specific A1 or A2, but really just go for good quality dairy. If it's not grass-fed dairy, it's not going to have the right fat profile and it's not gonna have the right protein profile to give you the benefit that you actually want on a ketogenic diet. Okay, now let's talk about specifics with the keto diet for a second, okay? With a keto diet, you don't want a big insulin spike, okay? This is just one of the most important things. Now, if you really know what you're doing, you can manipulate an insulin spike, that's for more advanced uh, applications. But when you're looking at the keto diet as a whole, you don't want big spikes in insulin, okay? Whey protein spikes your insulin. If you have a whey protein shake, yes, it can help you build muscle, but a whey protein shake will also spike your insulin. One of the reasons it helps you build muscle is because it does spike your insulin at a specific point in time. So when we look at how casein protein is extracted and how cottage cheese is made, by its very nature, we're getting rid of the whey. We're getting rid of the milk sugars, we're getting rid of the whey, we're getting rid of a lot of the components that carry some of the nasty things that dairy tends to carry around. All right, so what that means is we have a type of protein that isn't going to spike your insulin all that much. This is phenomenal for a ketogenic diet, especially at night. Now, casein protein also breaks down a little bit slower, which means if you're looking for something to satiate you a little bit more, then yes, it can be really, really good. So if you're entering into a fast and you wanna have a little bit more satiation, 
then cottage cheese might be a great thing to start your fast with if, again, you're comfortable with dairy. You don't have to consume it. When we look at the fatty acid profile, the kinds of fats that are in cottage cheese, it's predominantly saturated fat. We're looking at like 50 to 60% saturated fat. Saturated fat is critical on keto. And I have to go through this rigmarole for just a second because for those of you that don't understand the importance of saturated fat on a keto diet, then you need to hear this. So saturated fat is going to help with the myelination of your nerves, so it's going to overall help with your central nervous system in general, but it's also going to actually contribute to a lessened level of inflammation in the body, which believe it or not, combats the things that lead up to atherosclerosis. So saturated fat is very good on a keto diet. Now there was a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Took a look at over 2,900 senior citizen participants. Okay, these were people that were over 65 years old. And the study took a look at the overall fatty acid profiles in their blood plasma. So these were seniors that were generally consuming a decent amount of fat coming from dairy. Now dairy fat is different in and of itself. Dairy fat can be very, very good. Like when you look at grass-fed butter, for instance, it helps contribute to what's called butyric acid or butyrate. Okay, this is very powerful, has a ton of health benefits. Save that for another video. Okay, so when we look at the specific fatty acids they looked at, they look at pentadecanoic, they look at heptadecanoic, and they look at transpalmatoleic. So these are three of the primary dairy fatty acids. So then they studied these participants and they took a look at them six years later and 13 years later and ultimately 22 years later at the end of the study when they concluded it. They measured their fatty acid profiles and how much dairy fat they were consuming. At the end of 22 years, over 2,400 of the participants had died. Now, that's not necessarily what we're concluding the study from. What they found is that those that did die ended up dying from other situations. Those that had higher levels of dairy fat in their blood had lower instances of cardiovascular disease and a 42% less risk of a stroke. So saturated fat didn't have much to do with that. In fact, saturated fat seemed to combat a lot of those issues. So we know now that dairy fat, saturated fat coming from dairy is not a big deal, okay? Especially on keto when your body's thriving on fats. But again, there's a lot of big picture things that we have to look at. So I've been talking about the different things you have to look at with cottage cheese. Be very, very weary of most cottage cheeses, even ones that say they're organic. Okay, I was walking through Trader Joe's, and I love Trader Joe's, and their organic Trader Joe's cottage cheese actually has carrageenan in it, has a bunch of benzoates and a bunch of preservatives in it. So apparently, carrageenan is used as a thickener, and apparently you can still call a product organic even if it has carrageenan, which is a thickener that's literally one of the most inflammatory things in the world. Like, it's really, really bad. So if you guys do eat cottage cheese, I do recommend you check out Good Culture. These guys are really awesome. I found them at Whole Foods and then ultimately ended up linking up with them. So these guys have nailed it when it comes down to cottage cheese. Now, there's no special link or anything like that. I just encourage you to go to the grocery store and get Good Culture. They're at Whole Foods, they're at Sprouts, uh, they're at a lot of uh, Kroger's, major grocery stores. So the cool thing about Good Culture, we're talking four ingredients. Okay, we're talking milk and cream, which you could really count as one ingredient if you wanted to. And then we're talking about live and active cultures, we're talking about Celtic sea salt. So they've taken it a step further and are using Celtic sea salt instead of using iodized salt, which honestly, anyone that's taking a step away from iodized salt, I give major, major props to. So this stuff is awesome, coming from grass-fed cows, so we're getting a good quality fatty acid profile. Is this literally the only cottage cheese that is like that? But the cool thing is, is they have a double cream, heavy cream version, that's higher fat, so it works really well for keto. So again, if you have a Kroger, if you have a Whole Foods, make sure you check them out and use them as your cottage cheese. Plus, the taste is amazing and you'll never look back. So let's take a look with the keto diet, the other things we have to look at. Okay, magnesium content. Cottage cheese has a huge magnesium content. When you are on a keto diet, a lot of times you have trouble sleeping. The reason is because you don't have the insulin spike that is allowing what's called tryptophan to go into your brain. Maybe you've remembered with Thanksgiving dinner, they talk about tryptophan making you sleepy. Tryptophan itself doesn't make you sleepy. What tryptophan does is it allows the brain to process serotonin. So basically, tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin. Serotonin is what makes you feel good and feel relaxed. So sometimes people on keto have a hard time getting relaxed and going to sleep. Well, again, it's simply because of that. Magnesium will make you relaxed in a different way. You see, it activates what's called the GABA receptors. So it ends up making you relax through gamma aminobutyric acid receptors, which is a whole different world. Basically, it just is the opposite of anxiety. I mean, GABA is what calms you down. But then it also has another thing that occurs at the muscular level called ion transportation. So basically, it makes it so that muscle cells can receive other minerals so they get the right electrical balance to relax. You've probably heard people talk about taking magnesium to reduce muscle cramps. Okay, well that's why. So cottage cheese, in its good quality form, in a nice organic clean form, has a really powerful way of helping you out with those overall, not only muscle cramps, but muscle stiffness, and the things that keep you awake 
and make it hard for you to fall asleep. So when we're looking at the big picture of cottage cheese, we have something that is high protein, something that is high fat that will absolutely work. The best time to eat it is probably going to be either when you're starting a fast, like the night before, or maybe a little bit before bed, but quite frankly, you can still have cottage cheese in the morning. See, I'm a big fan of having higher fat foods in the morning, simply because you have less risk of those fats actually going to fat storage. So if you're gonna have something like the double cream good culture cottage cheese, having it in the morning just makes a little bit of sense because less impact of the fats on a negative fashion in your cells. So you can get away with a little bit more. People always think that cottage cheese has to be consumed at night because it digests slow. Well, why not consume it in the morning so that it digests slow, so that you don't snack all the way till lunch or so you can go a longer period of time without eating. Just, again, flip-flopping it, looking at it in a different way. So once again, do your due diligence. There are not many cottage cheeses that are out there that are clean, period. Okay, that is why I have taken such a strong stance for so long against cottage cheese as far as what you find in a normal grocery store. Cottage cheese can just be a sketchy world. It honestly could be a superfood on keto. It is a superfood on keto. You just have to be diligent about which one you pick up and stay away from the carrageenan at all costs. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.